With quality fuel transfer tanks costing nearly $1,000 and the raw materials only costing a small fraction of that, I figured I'll try building my own. I mean, how hard could it be? Well, for one, the welds have to be perfect. Even a small defect could cause fuel to leak all over the place. Second, we'll need to install baffles to prevent hundreds of pounds of fuel from sloshing all over the place while driving. And third, the exterior needs to be coated in a way that will withstand rusting in the salty northeastern winters. Not to mention, off-the-shelf fuel transfer tanks don't really fit my use case very well. I mean, they end up being a little bit too high, so they'll block my rear visibility, and they're not wide enough, so they don't use this space efficiently. So I went ahead and purchased two sheets of 12-gauge steel. They were $165 a piece. Because of the dimensions of the tank that I'm building, I'm not gonna be using these materials very efficiently. You could certainly build a similar size tank with one and a half sheets and save a bit of money. It'd be about $250 for your steel. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, that's great and all, but why do you even need a fuel transfer tank? Well, I have three reasons, and in case they're too boring and pedantic, I'll put some fluffy puppies over here, or something like that to hold your attention. Reason number one, and this is what caused me to drop all of my other projects and focus on this, is that I use home heating oil to heat my house in the winter, and my oil company is charging $5.99 a gallon right now, which is ridiculously expensive. And the weird thing is that I can go to the diesel pump at my nearest gas station and it's only $5.19 a gallon. That's 80 cents cheaper. If I use about 200 gallons of fuel every month, which is about right during the winter, that's a savings of $160 a month. I should mention that diesel and home heating oil are basically the same thing. There are some minor differences, but it's totally okay to use diesel to heat your home. Reason number two, I have an excavator, I have a backhoe and a tractor. They all run on diesel and it's not practical to bring them to the gas station to fuel them up. So having a fuel transfer tank makes it quite a bit easier to fuel them up here at home. And reason number three, some more cost savings. If I go on a long road trip with this truck, I'm gonna use a lot of diesel fuel. And the price of diesel here in the US varies greatly depending on what state you're in. Some states like California, for example, has very expensive fuel. And here in the Northeast, Pennsylvania usually actually has the most expensive fuel. And when I leave my house to go on a road trip out west or something like that, Pennsylvania is usually where I run out of fuel and have to fill up. So rather than paying their elevated prices, what I can do is just pull over and use the fuel transfer tank to fill up the main fuel tank in this truck. And I can keep on driving until I get to a state with much cheaper fuel. In the end, if I get enough use out of this thing, I think that it will pay for itself. The fuel tank is going to be 60 inches wide, 15 inches tall, and 23 inches deep. That should give me a total capacity of about 90 gallons. Okay, so I need to drill two holes in this top piece, which will accommodate these nifty little weld-in bungs. One of the holes is gonna be for the fuel pump and the other one's gonna be for the fuel filler. There, fits nicely. And then on the side of the tank, I'm just going to have a little quarter inch NPT drain. So I'm welding with the HTP Pro Pulse 220 MTS, and it's actually my first time welding steel with this machine. And look at the results. It's laying down to weld really nicely. Yeah, I'm really trying to make an effort to prep all of these joints so that I can minimize welding defects.
Okay, so I got this thing all welded up on the inside at least. I did these nice short segments to try to avoid warping too much. Before I weld the top of this on here, I need to build some baffles to prevent fuel from sloshing all over the place inside here. So this is how these baffles work. The fuel filler is gonna be on this side of the tank and then the fuel is gonna flow through these holes here to get to the other side of the tank. Meanwhile, air will be able to escape from these compartments over here by coming over the baffle because you can see that this right here is about an inch lower than the top of the tank. This thing did get a little bit warped when I was welding these bungs, but no worry, I will straighten it out. You can start with this corner and then I'll try to line the rest of it up. Well, here it is fitted in place. It looks pretty good. Just to see how this looks, I'm gonna have the fuel filler over here. And then the pump is gonna be over here and that fits nicely. I still need to figure out how I'm gonna mount this to the bed, weld in some attachment points, and then of course I need to paint it. Okay, it's time to start prepping this thing for painting, and I can't stress enough that if you don't prep the surface properly, there's no point in painting it because your coating will fail. Step one is to abrade the surface to not only remove mill scale, slag, and welding spatter, but also to create a surface profile that will allow the coating to form a mechanical bond with the steel. Step two is to clean the steel. I'm spraying on a degreaser to remove any trace amounts of oil. A good rinse with water will wash off the degreaser. So I'm gonna be using an epoxy primer. It's two parts. It consists of the epoxy itself and then a hardener. If you ever need to coat something that's really important, you don't want it to rust, you want a good quality coating, epoxy is the stuff to use. It's probably more than I need, but I'm gonna mix the whole thing up. It's 
So the instructions say to mix this up thoroughly for five minutes, and it says to use a timer. That might be a little bit overkill, but it is really important that epoxies are properly mixed. Okay, so this is the paint I'm using. It has real aluminum in it, I guess. And so my goal is to have it match the flatbed and look like aluminum. So I think this should accomplish that. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty. It is a really, really thin paint, but it does look nice. So that's cool. All right, it's a couple days later and it came out fairly well. There are a few drips in it, which is unfortunate. And also the roller didn't like how thick the epoxy was. So it sort of came apart and there are little pieces of roller in the coating, but otherwise it looks good. I mean, the color is great. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah, these rubber washers are pretty nice for isolating the tank from the bed. Okay, so I finished wiring this thing last night when it was dark out. I also stopped at the gas station and I managed to get about 80 gallons into the tank before the nozzle automatically shut it off. I could fit more in a pinch, but 80 gallons is probably a good amount. That's better. A little while later. Yeah, so that worked pretty well. I mean, my oil tank filler is not really designed for this type of nozzle, so it's a little bit awkward having to hold it, but this is an 18 gallon per minute pump, so it pumps a lot faster than the pump at the gas station does. I timed that one and it looked like it was about a 10 gallon per minute pump. So this is almost twice as fast as that. Another advantage of this setup is that it's got a fuel filter here, so all of the fuel from the tank going into whatever it's going into, any of my vehicles, uh, it, the fuel gets filtered first, which is also really nice. So I went for quite a while without releasing a video, and that's because I was working on a bunch of other videos that I put on hold to start working on this video. I have no idea what video is going to come out next, but my Range Rover is currently tying up my lift as I try to change the oil pump on that, which is turning into kind of a nightmare of a job, but I'm strongly incentivized to finish that one up so I can get my lift back. 
Other than that, I have a wide variety of projects that I will hopefully get to in the near-ish future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in whatever the next video is.